I want to thank uh, the church and especially Pastor Chris for asking me to speak on gratitude this morning. Um, it's actually an easy subject for me to talk about. There are a lot of virtues uh, other than gratitude, but gratitude's the only one that I get pretty easy. The rest of them is, are a disaster for me, really. You know, prudence, uh, temperance, all that stuff. Nah, I'm not so good at that, but I'm pretty good at gratitude. I mean, one of my favorite Psalm verses, I think it's in Psalm 16, says, the lines for me have fallen in fair places. And that's really true. Not that my life's been without some difficulties, it, it, like everybody's it has, but for the most part, things have worked out for me really well. I mean, I've, you know, I've had the life that I want in music. I've got wonderful friends. I'm still very close to my family. I'm relatively healthy. So gratitude is, uh, is kind of okay for me. It's one of those things that, uh, that really works. I grew up in the church, in the Methodist church, and then sometime in my 50s, maybe I think late 40s, I stopped going to church. And uh, I wouldn't say I was openly antagonistic toward the church, but I had no desire to go. I mean, Sunday mornings for me was uh, uh, consulting with the oracle of the Sunday Times and uh, drinking a mug of black coffee. Uh, with a spruce confections ruby scone by my side. Uh, I had a couple buddies, I have a couple buddies, uh, Jimmy Stanley and Morgan McKenzie. We met hiking, and uh, I've, we've stayed friends for long, many years now. <clears throat> they began talking to me when we get together about uh, this church that they went to, not in a proselytizing way. They just talked about it. It was part of their life, and, and, uh, and that was great. They were singing in the choir. They were involved in lots of things, and uh, it meant a lot to them, I think. So uh, I don't know how many years ago it was. It was a Palm Sunday, and I woke up, and I thought... Out of nowhere, I thought, I want to go to church and I want to sing All Glory, Laud, and Honor. I just wanted to sing that hymn. I really like that hymn. You can wail on it, and, and uh, I really like it. So I thought, well, I'll go to Jimmy and Morgan's church. And I knew where First Kong was, and so I, I went and um, uh, sat right over there uh, and was fine. I thought... You know, I might not even stay for the sermon. I'll sing to him, and we'll see what happens. And, and then uh, Jane Sawyer began to play the organ, and I started to cry. And I wasn't really sure why I started to cry, but uh, then the first hymn was, All Glory, Laud, and Honor. And I could barely sing it because I was bawling so much. And I realized why. It's because I had come home, and uh, I had found a home, and I found a family of people that uh, I realized loved me uh, and would, uh, would let me love them and walk through these days together. And so for that, I am so, so grateful to all of you for giving me that family. Thank you. Good morning. Even though this is Gratitude Sunday, I'm going to start with three confessions. This is church, after all. First, since mid-May 2021, I have organized my nine to five work schedule around the memoir writing group. The group meets on Wednesday afternoons from 1.30 to 3 p.m., a slot typically known to my colleagues as an ideal meeting time, but one permanently blocked on my calendar. Those who know me well will know this is a level of commitment to the writing group that I rarely make to the Sunday morning service. I see this mostly as a commentary on the unique power of the writing group and not on my ability to commit to church. Two, I missed my very first meeting with the writing group. My appointment for the second COVID vaccine had been scheduled at noon the same day. The pharmacist promptly left for his lunch break, 
at 11.57 a.m., and I spent two hours waiting in the lobby of the pharmacy at the King Supers at 30th and Arapaho, waiting for him to give me the shot. At the time, the second vac vaccine felt non-negotiable. The writing group felt optional. Although I emailed to explain my delay and apologize that I would be late, I never actually joined. Three, in early August 2021, I received some news that shook me around 1 p.m. on a Wednesday afternoon. I arrived to group on Rory and Laura McCutcheon's outdoor patio, visibly shaken and eventually broke down into tears. The members of the group compassionately asked all the right questions, questions to which I had no answers. A few days later, I picked up a pen and a new journal and started writing out the story that I had struggled to explain. I have since written more than 375 journal pages by hand of that life chapter and read most of them to the group in 10 or 15 minute segments. I guarantee you that few, if any, of those pages would have been written without the group. If it's not already obvious, I'm very grateful for the writing group. I'm grateful for the opportunistic conversation between Pastor Chris and Nancy Wade years ago that planted the seed. I'm grateful to Nancy Wade that she decided to run with that idea. I'm grateful for the warm welcome I received on my second attempt at joining the rec and for the re weekly reliability ever since. Grateful for how during the post-vaccine stretch of the pandemic, we almost always found a way to safely meet in person. I'm grateful for the blank journals I've received from members of the group, a gesture I take as support for my commitment to writing everything by hand. I'm grateful for the balance carefully struck between accountability and flexibility that we all need. I'm grateful for the empty conference room or the heritage room on Wednesday afternoons and the flexibility I use to take calls and meetings from them before 1.30 or after 3 p.m. I'm grateful for the curious, thoughtful compassion with which all of our stories, whether light or heavy, whether meandering or philosophical, whether fictional or non-fictional, are heard, received, and processed. I'm grateful for the wisdom often buried in those stories. If it's not obvious, I'm not a typical member of the group. Nancy often tells me that I bring down the average age of the writing group by a few decades every week. <laughs> During one of our early meetings, I read a story about my favorite summer, and the group had one point of feedback. They told me I read too quickly, and they encouraged me to slow down. I explained I was nervous because I wasn't used to sharing my stories. They laughed, and someone encouraged me to look around the table. Look at us, she said. Between us all, we've seen everything life can offer. There's nothing you can say that will shock us. I think of that often, as I find a lot of strength in the knowledge that among the decades of lived experience that gather each week, we collectively have been through nearly everything that life can offer. Triumph, heartbreak, heartbreak betrayal, grief, jubilance, surprise, and a lot of joyful or quietly mundane days. To all former and current members of the group, I am very grateful for your written words, vulnerability, wit, authenticity, courage, strength, commitment, reliability, honesty, openness, curiosity, and compassion. For your openness and acceptance of my handwritten stories, and for your patience with my confusing handwriting, edits, occasionally repetitive sentences, and missing words. I'm grateful for the community that we've delicately and carefully built, for the 90 sacred minutes each week where all of our stories can be written, shared, and received with such loving authenticity. I'm grateful for the friendships, unique connections, and companionship embedded in that community. But mostly, I'm grateful for the weekly connection the writing group gives me to this church. Thank you. I, I think, yeah.
Good morning. <clears throat> I'm delighted to be here on Gratitude Sunday and explain my gratitude for friendship. When I think of friendship, four, uh, several words come to mind. One is acceptance, one is respect, support, and trust. Those are the chief characteristics that I'm concerned about. And it's an interaction between people, it's a mutuality. And such as makes you think about uh, how do you define friendship? How do you get to know a person? And I submit that involves time. It takes time to get to know somebody. It takes uh, patience. We're all unique. We have different capabilities. We have different uh, backgrounds. And so patience for uniqueness is very important. It takes accompaniment, being with somebody for a period of time, uh, having sharing experiences with them, getting to know them. And it takes the ability to listen. And that that's active listening. What did you mean by that? I'm not sure I understand. Could you repeat that again so that you get to know a person? You converse with them and you get uh, an opportunity to learn and an opportunity to grow. Um, and that's where we develop friendship. In 2005, Bob Padoff and I joined a hiking group where we hike every Monday together. And through that process, we have developed friendships. Uh, as you think about that group, we've met those requirements. In 2005, that's 18 years ago, we have hiked every Monday together. We've accompanied one another and shared experiences. Yes, we've been lost, we've had medical emergencies, and we've talked with one another. And we've been patient because we each bring different backgrounds, different experiences, different perspectives, and we've listened to one another. Active listening, where we've asked questions. I don't understand how you arrived at that conclusion. Your facts and my facts seem to be the same. Could you repeat that again? And we've learned from one another and we have grown. Let me give you an illustration of that process that we go through. Several months ago, Bob talked about uh, an opportunity that he was trying to present to the church from his position as a member of the Ministry of Last Things. I was also served on that committee with Bob for a while, and so we had a shared a basis of comparison, and we talked for a while. And I grew quite excited for Bob because he was presenting a program that he thought was important to present to the church, to the confirmands, as, we re as, the, as the members of the church, as we uh, come to make decisions uh, at the end of our lives. And he was quite excited to present an option to the church uh, by contacting a company, having a speaker come, presenting a program. Uh, Bob would be reserving the room. Uh, we would have the equipment that was necessary, the microphones being ready, the setup, the re uh, and the food and all that kind of, that had to go along with this program. So I was excited about this. I really was involved with Bob and excited for him as he presented this program. It was difficult, of course, to mesh the schedule of the speaker with the uh, calendar of the church, but a date was finally agreed upon and uh, that, that program took place on a particular Sunday. And that Monday, I was all excited for Bob. I wanted to know what went on. And I, on that Monday, I asked, how did it go, Bob? Was it as good as you had anticipated? And he said, it was okay. I said, okay? What do you mean, okay? He said, well, the speaker didn't show. I, oh, 
Oh, was I angry. I was mad, I was irate because I'd talked with Bob for weeks about this program. And I was ready to do something. Uh, smoke coming out of my ears. I wanted, Bob, what are we gonna do? And Bob said, well, you know, she could have had uh, a, an automobile accident, a medical emergency. She was needed at home. Bob was being patient and kind, and here I was rushing to judgment, and Bob was expressing Christian values. And so it provided with me with another perspective and a value system as Bob was being patient and kind. I realized that I was going through a learning process, a growing process, and I was grateful for friendship. Good morning. When Pastor Chris asked me to speak on the subject of friendship, initially I was at a loss to know where to begin. Then I was reminded that when my wife, Tati, and I arrived in Boulder County 19 years ago, except for our daughters in town, we didn't know a soul, nobody. You know, back in Toledo, Ohio, where during a span of 30 years, I worked for the same company, uh, married a local gal, and raised three active children, as you might expect, we had friends galore. No doubt many of you who may have settled here for a new job or in the name of making a family connection can identify with such a situation. Our saving grace, however, was that as longtime members of the United Church of Christ in Toledo, it didn't take us long to find our way to First Congregational Church Boulder where after several Sunday visits, our spirits were uplifted by the preaching of Pastor Marty McMain, awed by the splendid music provided by the choir and the organ, and most importantly, we were warmly welcomed by the friendly members of the congregation. Frankly, during those visits, here we experienced a sense of community or what might be described as a like-mindedness or a commonality with our values. In other words, we felt at home. To continue our faith journey, it didn't take us long to become fully-fledged members, and of course, we proceeded to make many new friends. And since the majority of our friends are right here among you, let me say thank you for putting up with me and let me try to briefly explain how that happened. Over the years here at First Kong, I had seized the opportunity to serve on various boards and committees where if you're a good listener, you can really get to know people, to appreciate them, to like them, and to befriend them. So often, church meetings begin with attendees offering brief expressions of what we call joys and concerns. Now, that's a great way to meet someone. That's a, an icebreaker that you can build on. In such settings, relationships based on mutual respect and trust can often develop into lasting relationships. I can't emphasize strongly enough the potential impact of the investment of your time, volunteering, and your talent in advancing the work of this church's ministry. Whether you offer your time and talent in the choir or on a committee, or you participate in any of the numerous opportunities for social engagements, be it one of the annual retreats or periodic dinners or brunches, give some of those a try, and likely you'll make a friend or two. Personally, every Friday morning I'm here at the men's breakfast, which I highly recommend. 
if any of you men would like to meet a guy over bagels and coffee, come on and join us. And also, I've made many friends at the men's annual retreat as well. Now, finally, uh, to set the record straight about the hiking group that Ed Hall talked to you about, I need to give you my account of the infamous men's hiking group. That's where I met my dear friend, the Honorable Joseph Edward Hall. Remember, it was 19 years ago that I was new in town and didn't know anybody. Well, it turned out that my wife had a friend in Toledo who had a brother in Boulder who, who thought that uh, I ought to get acquainted with these, these uh, men whom I had never met. So we got together for lunch and when it, it became quickly apparent that we had something in common and he graciously invited me to join with the four other friends in this hiking group of retirees, which met every Monday morning. How fortuitous, it, how fortuitous it was that I was accepted by these virtual strangers to share in their weekly adventure in the wild. Ed Hall was a member of that group, and in the course of the ensuing 18 years, every Monday, we were on an all-day hike in, you name it, the national parks or the state parks, the Brainerd area, the Flatirons, you name it, chances are we've hiked on the trails that you've been on. During our time together, all that hiking, talking, and sharing, we all became best of friends. Truly, we became a band of brothers who regularly shared their lows, their highs, their disappointments, aches and pains, and medical problems, of course, all kept in confidence. Regrettably, in recent years, two of our pals have passed away, and a third is now debilitated with dementia and unable to join us. So it's only the three of us guys, like the three amigos, who continue to uh, be on the trail. Although nowadays we only do about four miles on a flat surface, and then we settle down to a cup of coffee to reflect on our good fortune to be in Colorado and still be ambulatory. So I heartily recommend that you join a hiking group and meet some friends. So yes, in conclusion, on this Gratitude Sunday, I am grateful for, for by all measures, my cup of blessings uh, doth runneth over. I've had a wonderful life, happily married for almost 54 years, raised three wonderful children, and I'm grateful for this church where my faith has been nourished and has been strengthened and where I was simultaneously gifted with a treasure trove of friendships. Thank you.